In this very first example, we are going to create a block diagram that represents the speed and path control car. If you want to steer a car along a certain path, we first need to define that path and that becomes our desired behavior. So let's start by finding a desired path that I'm going to call here PD, the desired path. This is our reference signal. This is the signal that you're going to give to the car and this is the ideal trajectory that the car should follow. In order to steer the car along that path, we need to know the current position of the car and then take actions based on the based on how far we are from that desired path. So here we can create a error that or uh, we can create an element that compare the desired path and the current path. So let me call here P the current path of the car, PD is the desired path, so the output of this block here is now the error. So we take the desired path, we compare the desired path with the, with the current path, and this gives us a position error. And this is now the signal that are going to use to control the car. It's not the current path and it's not the desired path, but the difference between them. Think about it. If the error is big, what do we do when we drive? We steer the car, we move the steering wheel, more or less, depending on the magnitude of this error. Again, it's not dependent on the desired path, nor on the current path, but on the difference between them. So we now take this error and this error is converted into an action. We pass this through the steering wheel by moving the steering wheel the output here is the steering angle and the steering angle now is what we give to the car in order to minimize this error. So this now goes to the car that I'm going to represent here with a single box. This now go, goes to the car. And the car here represents the dynamics of the engine, the dynamics of the car, and the complete model of the car. So again, based on the error, we change the steering angle more or less and give that to the car. The car now responds to that command. That's the output of the car. And we measure now how our desired path is. In this case, the sensor that we use to assess where we are is simply the driver's vision. So we can create another block here. So this is the driver's vision. And the driver's vision gives now the current path that we needed in the beginning here to compare with the desired path. So here is our error. Here is our actuator. The steering wheel is what ma makes the car respond to the error. And the steering angle is the output of the actuator that is the steering wheel. Here we have the sensor, the driver's vision, and the output of the sensor is the current path. Now let's complicate this problem a bit more and also add speed control. So following the same strategy, we want now to go along this path, but we also have a desired speed. So let's call V D a desired speed. If you want the car to follow this desired speed, what do we need? Well, here we need the current path. So here we also need now the current speed, the current speed of the car that I'm going to call V. And this creates the error in terms of speed. What do we do now to correct the speed? We use an actuator, and that actuator in this case is the throttle. We now give this error to the throttle. This is converted into a throttle angle.
and the throttle angle is now sent to the car. The car now responds to this command. The speed of the car will change. And now I have to measure the speed. And here we need then a sensor. So this is a speedometer. And the speedometer now gives the current speed. Now let's think about this error-based control again. We don't drive based on the desired speed. We drive based on how far we are from the desired speed, from the, we ba based on the difference between desired and the current speed. We press more or less on the throttle depending on that error, not on the absolute value of any of these two. Now we convert that into a throttle angle and this is given to the car. So this is now the actuator. This is what makes the car respond to a certain command. This is the output of the actuator gives, given to the car. The car responds by changing the speed. We measure the speed and close the loop.